Hello guys, it's Michael here. In this video we'll talk about hotkeys in Age of Empires 4, so we'll show you a few tips and tricks related to actually playing the game properly, how you can improve, and what exactly uh, you can do with your keyboard in the game. I've been playing Starcraft 2 for a few years now and I've learned a lot of very useful things that are not implemented in the OE4 or baked in by default, but you can really make your life easier by doing this. If you enjoy watching the video guys, please remember to follow me on Twitch, link is above, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and also uh, give me a like below the video and tell me what you think. Now let's just get into the topic. So we're going to talk about four things. We'll talk about the F1, F4 keys, we'll talk about actual uh, mouse hotkeys and how to do them uh, in AoE4 because they're just not baked into the base game. And we'll also talk about the so-called uh, hotkey cycle or so-called spamming, right? And we'll finally talk about the things that you need to bind in your keyboard. So stay tuned. Remember all those things are also kind of divided. The video is divided into sections so you can jump to the things that are relevant to you and let us get going. Okay guys, the first piece of advice is going to be the F1 to F4 keys. You can rebind those keys in your settings. I'm going to show you how. So we go to controls, we go to view and remap controls, and you go to common keys. In common keys, you will have the possibility to use your control group. So I wanted to basically just go to snap to the particular hotkey. So we want to basically go to focus on control group 7, 8, 9, and 0. You're going to rebind those because it's very difficult to read those on the keyboard. You're very unlikely to ever use them. And if you bind them to F1 to F4, you basically have four additional control groups at your disposal. Right? We're going to use focus because you want to, as I said, snap instantaneously to the targets. If you press F1, it just instantaneously takes you to your target. Let's see how it actually works in game. Right? Uh, and we want to basically just be able to go and navigate between different places. We have, so we have, for instance, have this one, uh, the TC over here. We want to snap to our second TC that's on the other the side of the map, okay? And we can basically just go to our mining camp over here, of course, as well, uh, and, and just kind of go between those places very, very quickly, right? This allows you to basically navigate uh, lots of uh, different places at the same time. You can, you know, snap instantaneously. You don't have to move your cursor off your screen to the minimap to actually navigate it. It's very, very useful. It's a trick that almost every single StarCraft 2 player is using, so I would say you probably should be doing that as well. So basically, I'm going to, okay, that's obviously a little bit of an exaggeration, but this is very useful, okay? So what you need to do is you basically need to rebind your F1 to F4 keys, the control uh, as well. So if you go to here to this uh, select uh, set control group, you have to set the control group from 7 to 0. I did also set my 6 group because it's kind of far on the keyboard. I'm not really using it anymore. So I just decided to bind it to my mouse. I'll show you how to do this in the next section. So you basically go control F1 uh, to uh, through F4 on those uh, set control groups, then you go... Uh, focus on group from uh, F1 to F4 on this and you can potentially just go and select those particular groups with those uh, with the uh, select uh, option. You don't really need this though, I'm not really using that at all, but it is something you can do. The really important thing is to bind these two focus and this just allows you to snap and react very very quickly to whatever is happening to your bases. Okay, uh, so the second piece of advice is concerned with your mouse keybinds. As you guys can could have probably notice already, uh, the game doesn't have that functionality in itself. So you actually have to do this manually by using an external piece of software and assigning those uh, kind of extra buttons to your mouse. So the first thing that you want to do is actually you want to assign a few useless key binds on your keyboard to something that you want to be using on your mouse. So what I decided to do since I do not reuse my right hand side periphery, okay? Uh, I decided to actually bind a few keys from my right hand side periphery uh, to, uh, the, uh, to the key binds over here. So I figured, okay, I want, I, I'm not using group number six too much. So I'm going to assign U to group number six, uh, which is on the right hand side of the, of the keyboard. I've also selected my key K, which is also quite far away and never reached to that. So I'm not using that. I'm going to have K assigned to my mouse. And finally, I also, so that is my, ma my, my mouse button for select all military units. And there's also a, uh, a key bind for selecting all my military production buildings, which is I, okay? And I take those three keys and I launch my piece of software, which is called um, uh, X mouse button control. And in this piece of software, I can actually reassign my keys to whatever I see fit. So in this particular case here, I have, uh, as you guys can see, I can press my free mouse button, which is mouse button, which is the uh, middle button, which is my button four, button five. And when I press them, when I assign the things properly here, it will actually select those particular uh, keys. Okay, so for instance here, if I want to bind I to this particular button, I go to simulated keys, 
uh, option. As you guys can see, it has been selected now. And I just click this uh, wheel, as you can see, and I type in I and I press OK. And what it does is actually it selects uh, my, uh, my simulated key now. And whenever I press it now, uh, it will just uh, actually react to it in, uh, in the game as if I were to press uh, I on the keyboard. So this is just a very quick uh, workaround uh, over the functionalities of the base game. Obviously, it's not great that AOE4 doesn't have that necessarily built in, but it's a very nice thing you can do anyway if you want to just kind of use uh, your, uh, your keyboard to the maximum, okay? Because that just allows you to have those free things available to yourself uh, that would have otherwise been, you know, somewhere else on the keyboard and probably le like less convenient to use. It's a very good kind of practice to get used to this and just kind of incorporate those mouse keybinds into your macro rotation. And it just makes your life exponentially easier overall. So I expect that you guys can actually make use of this. By the way, there is a quick note. I have all my keybind profiles for AOE4 are available on my Discord, link in the description below if you want to actually access and use my own keybinds. It's really easy to do. Uh, you can just kind of that, get that profile from there and, and get going. So that's basically all there is. Let's continue to tip number three, which is how to actually execute a macro, macro rotation properly. Hey guys, tip number three is actually related to your hotkey cycle or the so-called hotkey spam. And this is something that you should really get used to. Getting that rotation down is something that will allow you to win late game or at least control late game better. It is something that is staple to basically any RTS game, okay? So I'm going to show you what exactly you should be doing. We'll talk about those points. I'll show you then how exactly this should be executed. So first of all, you are supposed to be producing villagers almost at all times. Basically, any build that you're doing uh, will involve you producing villagers continuously. So getting a single hotkey under which you have all the TCs, uh, I'm, I, I just use four because I'm used to this. There's also, you can bind a select all TCs on your keyboard. I think it's, it's H. It might be H. Yeah, it is H on my keyboard as well. So you can also use H for that. I just use four because I'm very used to that from StarCraft 2. Uh, and you, I just kind of queue up a few villagers. If the game is going late, I control. I, I usually just kind of go, kind of go a Shift Q, which uh, queues five instead of one, and I just respond. Uh, uh, like, and then I kind of continue going. Then another important thing is that you also want to uh, select your military buildings, okay? Because you want to keep up your production, right? So you want to kind of produce some units here. Uh, you can also have a few of your of your military buildings bound to another key, like I have this one, for instance, on my button number three and six. Uh, so I have like uh, you can have some unique text, like for instance the clockwork tower for the Chinese. You probably want to have that on another key bind as well, so that it produces consistently, and you kind of always select it within your macro rotations, right? Uh, obviously, you probably should have more uh, more buildings than I do have right now. It's it's a kind of small uh, number, but it's just a, to demo how this thing works, okay? Then you go and you want to jump between points of interest. As we said, we have F1, F2, F3, F4 keys bound to specific uh, specific places. As you, can, as you guys can see, I have one here, two here on an RTC, three on this kind of distant uh, proxy base. And then I also have another one uh, bound to my um, main army. It's good to have like a few kind of units that are in the main army perhaps bound to four. And our good idea might be to actually bind your uh, kind of macro building, like for instance, the, uh, you know, the guild call for the French, to that particular button so that you can always just kind of snap to it, just get going quickly with whatever it produces and continue uh, your, your gameplay, right? So it's usually just kind of a good idea to have that going. So it's kind of important, honestly, to do, to do this, to kind of go through those points of interest. It allows you to sometimes just discover as well whether your opponent is attacking you before you notice them on the minimap because you just kind of snap to one place, snap to the other, snap to the other. Like you just kind of get a lot of control over the map this way. And you can really avoid some major threats because sometimes you're just not, you don't have like the time to even look at the minimap properly. And this will allow you just kind of to supervise those kind of vulnerable locations on the map and uh, will give you a good idea as to what you should be doing, how you should be reacting, okay? If you have a scout, it's a good idea to have them bound to another key as well. So if you have like someone scouting, like probably a scout or a knight, you know, spotting for your team, uh, for, your, I mean, for, your, for your army, you probably want to have them on a separate hotkey that is not bound to anything else. And this is because you just will be able to, to just kind of jump to them very quickly then and see what is going on on the map. It's very useful to have that unit there and to kind of supervise them and to see where you can maybe move them around a little bit and uh, get some damage done to your enemy perhaps, right? By, by seeing what the, their army movements and adjusting properly. Then you want to snap to your main army, right? So I'm just gonna do it with my one button, double pressing that, and I'm just going to move it somehow, right? That's, that's just kind of to demo how things work. And finally, you also want to, once again, just go between all those locations. And finally, just select your tech hotkey, maybe. That's also useful to have that in, in the back of your head, to have like your tech building under some sort of a hotkey, or using the generic select all tech 
hotkey that is kind of baked into AOE five AOE four generally speaking. Okay, so you can also do that. Just you know, supervise that you're getting some sort of tech. You can add a university to that. I'm just using five because I'm used to that from StarCraft two again. But you can obviously just do something else. You can just use whatever button the game tells you to do. Maybe T would be a good idea because T is kind of close to the rest. Maybe R as well. They are very close on the keyboard, so you might actually want to uh, might want to be pressing those two. That would probably help you quite a bit as well. And if you just can get this rotation down, you can just kind of get into repeating this pattern over and over again, you will definitely get a decent advantage and you will have what it takes to probably prevail in uh, in those multiplayer matches where, you know, pressure mounts and you need to be doing a lot of things at the same time. So if you can get into this rotation very quickly, so as you can see, I just go to produce my units, I go to, uh, to produce my uh, army here, I queue some units up, then I go to, throughout my, my entire uh, town, right? I go to uh, my guild hall uh, and I'm just going to kind of do that thing. I'm going to move my, my army now. I'm going to go to my scout right? All these things, again, snapping between, uh, getting my uh, getting my tech building selected. All these things will really make your life easier if you can just, uh, you know, execute them properly. So it is very important to actually get that. Uh, another useful, useful key probably is going to select all the idle villagers because you can then actually just very quickly react to what's happening on the map and um right and and just kind of get them going right it's, it's kind of useful to have something assigned to that as well i just use control tilde uh to the button for that you can obviously do something else as well you can i you can also use control q or something control control something is usually probably something that you could be doing here and this will allow you to basically just uh, navigate your hotkeys better and will give you a uh a good entry into into those longer games specifically, right? Because you can just multitask a lot. You can increase your APM very quickly if you just kind of repeat that repeat that cycle over and over again. It is very very useful. If you watch me play, you can see how how kind of maybe I'm not a great player, okay? But I think I have macro down to a decent level because of those those cycles and because of how you can actually just you know exploit that mechanic. Okay, so a few final notes. First of all, hotkeys that you need. You want to have all your TCs on a single hotkey or just you want to be using the H hotkey, I guess, which goes between one TC and another. Uh, it's really, really useful to have that going because this just allows you to uh, really, uh, really just kind of get a lot uh, of villagers being produced at all times, which is really an important thing for any RTS game. I would just, generally speaking, just bind all your TCs to a hotkey, just kind of get used to that. That's something I'm doing, but again, debatable, right? Then selecting all the villagers. Like if you have a lot of villagers idle because, for instance, like you ran out of wood or berries in a given area and you want to just very quickly select them and move them to another area, like you can just go do this by, by kind of pressing that button. I use Control Q here. Uh, you can also use Control Till or, you know, T, R, any of those kind of, kind of big keys that are available to you uh, from the get-go uh, because they're just not bound to anything useful, okay? Uh, then you also probably want to have select military production buildings, right? That's something that you should probably also have on, uh, maybe on your mouse. That's what I'm doing here. I just kind of have that because in the heat of battle, it's sometimes very hard to just kind of go and, you know, build units from specific building. You can cycle throughout this interface with your tab button. You can just add some extra units just effortlessly almost by just kind of circulating through them. It's also very, very useful overall. Then you also want to be able to uh, select your black blacksmith or add a university there later on in the Imperial Age. You, I have it on five once again, but there are, there's also a, a kind of default hotkey for selecting all your technology, right? That's also something that you can do. I am just kind of particularly fond of having that on five because I'm really used to this. this. This kind of baked into my into my brain. But this is something you should always uh, have in uh, have in check. The final thing is probably uh, is to actually uh, have a market selected as well, right? Because I haven't I don't have market in this game. Just realized that. And you can have that on uh, whatever key you really want. It's a good idea maybe to kind of have it bound to whatever um, key on the on the keyboard that you don't have selected, maybe on the R or something, just select the market uh, and have some trade going, right? Getting used to this interface over here is also particularly useful because it will just give you a lot of control when you have too much gold, for instance, to spend, or you want to just kind of sell a lot of wood as, I, as is the case for me over here, right? Just keep in mind, obviously, like as you sell, the value of that resource drops. And that's basically what I really wanted to tell you guys. Uh, if you get uh, something useful from this video, please remember to leave me a follow uh, on Twitch, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and let me know what you think in the comments below. So stay tuned for more videos because I'm going to be making a lot of AOE4 content. I'm going to be casting as well. I'm going to be playing the game itself too. So in order to actually get a good idea of what I'm doing, uh, you can uh, follow me uh, on Twitch and on YouTube because I multi-stream to both of those platforms. So. Stay tuned guys, see you around, I hope you did actually learn something useful from this, and this being said, uh, see you in the next episodes.